Hey guys, it's Justin from Kabelka from J. Kabelka Reptiles doing a new Pro Tips video. It's been so long since I did a Pro Tips video. I hope you guys enjoy this and really get some good information. This week we're going to be talking about ultrasounding, which is one of the more complicated subjects I've dealt with in a Pro Tips. The, uh, ultrasounding is, is something that I've been doing for about four years, and it's not necessary to breeding all pythons to be able to ultrasound. However, if you have access to one, um, it can give you some great information about what your females are doing and really helps understand the process they go through from follicles to ovulation to later laying. So it'll also help, also help you maximize your males and learning when to breed your ball pythons most effectively. So we're going to look at some different females here. This is my first ultrasounding session of the year. This is January. So there's going to be not a whole lot of females with really good follicles. We're going to find out which ones have them, which ones are just starting to develop. And most, most importantly, we're going to find out how to use that information to breed these females really effectively so we don't waste any time. Okay, the first female I'm going to ultrasound here is a normal female, and I actually know she has follicles. I palpated her a couple weeks ago. We're going to go ahead and take a look at them. We have an ultrasound gel, which is a medium for the ultrasound to pass through. If you don't use this, you're not going to get a good clear picture. You see on my screen turned white there. And you can do it a couple ways. You can ultrasound them here in the tub. What you're really wanting is for this last third section of the body to be relatively straight. And she's, she's a little uh, high strung here. So I'm going to try to move her around a little bit and get her to... There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put the ultrasound right here on this last third of the body. If you can see the screen, these are when you have good follicles, they are very, very easy to see. You really cannot miss them. It's nothing complicated about this. If you have good follicles, they're going to be there. And these are, if you look on the edge of the screen, the right side, you see there's little dots, and it may not show up on the video that well. But the, the dots represent um, centimeters. So if you look at this follicle, it is approximately the height of two dots which is approximately two centimeters. I don't measure them. You can measure them with the ultrasound accurately. However, I just estimate it because that is plenty good enough for our purposes. I also don't spend a lot of time counting follicles, although you can do that and get an idea, although not exact, of the number of eggs you're gonna get. See, we're moving down, there's the first one. I, just, I tend to kind of hide, you have to get the right angle. We got, start to run dry on, on gel here. There's one up there. Let's move down, there's a couple down there below. They're kind of hard to get the right angle on. There's some good clear ones. This is a big girl, so I wouldn't be surprised at all to get eight or nine eggs. You see down here below, we're just going into intestine area. Those shapes there are just folds in her intestine. They're not follicles. So there you go. All right, one girl down, 2.0 follicles. Okay, this is the second female, and on this one, we, real, we immediately can see there's good follicles here. These are, according to the measuring, they're about one centimeter. Which one centimeter, this is really zoomed in, so even though it looks pretty big on the screen, these are not nearly as, uh, as big as, as they look. These are what I would consider a good size residual follicle. I call it residual if it's under one and a quarter. Anything over one and a quarter is, is pretty much in a growth phase. You know it's, it's, it's doing something, it's growing. Anything that's 1.0 or, or even smaller, it's there. It has, it has a good opportunity, but you're not necessarily, she's not necessarily going currently. So in this situation, what I would likely do with her is go ahead and put one breeding on her just to encourage it and then give her a couple months just to kind of decide if she wants to uh, go ahead and put these follicles into growth stage. If I come back in 30 days or in 60 days and see that they're now one and a quarter or one and a half, that's my sign that it's worked and that she's headed the right direction at that point. Okay, here we have another girl. This has a different size follicle to show you guys. This is, you see it there. These are about one and a half, almost, almost one and three quarters. These are definitely in growth phase. When you see this happening, you are, she's headed the right direction. You're not guaranteed a clutch. You, you rarely are actually guaranteed a clutch, but she is, uh, she's heavy in growth phase. If she hasn't been bred, need to get a breeding on her right now. If she has been bred, then she's probably in good shape. You may get one more breeding on her before she went, goes ahead and ovulates in probably around, 
probably around 60 days she'll ovulate. All right, here's another girl that we just ultrasound. It has really big follicles. These are the biggest ones we've seen yet this evening, and these are about two and a quarter to almost two and a half if you go uh, widthwise. See how they're, they're almost square in shape because they're pushed up against each other. There's so many in there. This is how they get hard to count because they get, they're kind of piled up and they're not even, which there's definitely a lot here. Let's talk about what we're seeing on the screen. If you look there at the top, you see the ridges there at the top. That's the spine. I'm running into the spine there that you're seeing on the screen. You get lots of refraction off the spine. You want to be careful not to hit it directly. That's why I like to go in from the, from the side so that you don't point strictly up at the spine and get refraction. See there's a spine there at the top and some ribs. We're seeing straight through the ribs here and we're looking right at the follicles. And there's just a, a whole ton of them. Just moving down, running out of gel here, and that's the last one. You see, moving down. I'm probably right now about eight inches up from the tail. Let's see if we can find it. There's your well. That was at the top, but running out of gel again. There it is. There we go. There's your first one. Let's count them if we can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. That'll be a really big clutch if she gives me all eleven. Now, just because you see number, a certain number of follicles doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get that number of eggs. And then a couple of them will reabsorb and sometimes um, you'll have a couple smaller ones suddenly kind of grow up and appear. So you just work with what you have. Okay, here we have a piebald female, real nice slow white piebald female. And this is an example of what they look like when they have no follicles or no follicles that, that are easy to find, put it that way. See, she'd actually been poor eater um, recently. So what you have here is, there's the follicles right there. See how tiny they are? They're like. I call, I call these more like seedling follicles. They're there and they could grow, but they are not currently. They're kind of hard to get the right angle even to get them to show up. Right there, see them? Right, right there by the spine. But those are just tiny and they're not doing anything. So when I see that, um, they just tell me that the female's not doing anything anytime soon. I don't mind going ahead and breeding her sometimes, but mostly it'd be because breeding might make her eat, might, might get her going, but she is a something that I would come back in a couple months and hope to see something different from her at that point. Okay, this is a uh, het pied female, and we were just ultrasounding her and finding just massive follicles. See here, they, can't even, they don't even fit on the screen. These are basically, she is building for ovulation at this point. Once they get to that size, they don't, they don't reabsorb you're guaranteed something by by this point basically you're going to get either slugs or eggs these are just massive massive follicles so what I would expect when I see this is I, I would expect her to ovulate probably in the next two to three weeks just on average see how they're pressed together they're so big in her but she is done at this point I don't even know if you put a breeding on her at this point if it would make a difference and just as an aside, this is a great example of a het pied female with no het pied markers. They do exist.